This is the new Pocket Go version 2, a portable console that runs classic video games. It's made in China and costs something around $60. Check the link in the description, that's where I bought it from and it's a safe store. First of all, why that name, new Pocket Go version 2? It's because there's the first Pocket Go, a smaller and simpler device, then the new Pocket Go came out, and then the new Pocket Go V2 brought some advances. According to the manufacturer, the D-pad and the analog stick have received improvements, the housing case has gone from glossy to something pearly, which should help with scratches, and it has received a welcome reset button underneath, that is, if for some reason an emulator crashes, you can reboot there. Oddly, they decided to remove the menu button, the one above the select, or kind of. As the case hasn't changed anything, the button remains there but won't respond. The menu function will depend on the software, many emulators use the power button for that. This is a very complete device in terms of commands. At the front we have the D-pad, one analog stick and action buttons. On the top there are four shoulder buttons, which is good for PlayStation games, and luckily it already comes with USB Type-C to charge. At the bottom there are two micro SD card slots, one of them already comes with a card containing the operating system and some games, and the other can be used to expand the memory with more titles. This is nice, since in similar models the system card is hidden behind the battery or something, not convenient for some system updates. Build quality is ok, not great. When you shake the console a little, you can see some slack in the buttons, which gives the impression of an assembled device, not a single piece, you know? As a reference, the RG350 handheld that I have tested before, it really feels more premium in that sense. In general, I like the feedback from the buttons, they all kind of click. That includes the D-pad, and I prefer it to be clickable rather than soft or fluffy. The analog, which in theory is improved, mm, I'm not a fan. It has a somewhat dry feedback, as if there's something like sand at the base. It resembles Sony's PSP analog a little, so the response in games is acceptable, and as you can see, it came with this rubber tip in the box, which I like. Turning the device on, we notice that the 3.5 inch screen has IPS technology and a very good image quality. It's bright and does not distort colors when viewed from the side. The resolution is low, but as low as the games it will run, so that's actually good. The operating system is a variation of Linux and it brings a section with free licensed games, including a version of Doom and also the homebrew remake for Streets of Rage, very nice. Then there's a settings menu, another one with simple applications, and finally the emulators part. You can run a good number of platforms, including classic arcade games, Neo Geo, Game Boys, including Advance, Famicom, Sega Genesis, Master System, Super NES and PlayStation. In terms of raw power, the new Pocket Go V2 outperforms handhelds such as Beat Boys, that are made by the same manufacturer, and also the LDK Landscape. It's on the same level as the famous RG350, that is, it's still a simple processor but suitable for classic games. The performance I got was very very similar to that on the RG350, I mean, Sega Genesis ROMs run perfectly, Arcade and Neo Geo are close to 100%, all Game Boys are just fine, Super NES, which is usually a problem for some slower machines, it also runs nicely, and PlayStation, the most powerful platform supported, I'd say that 7 out of 10 games were good right away, and 9 out of 10 were good after I touched the so-called frame skip configuration. Nintendo 64, I've seen some people testing it on YouTube, but it just won't play well, better give up on it. The general experience of playing games here was very nice, among the mentioned platforms I could run almost everything. Oh, and also I realized that the screen has great performance, couldn't notice any problems with ghosts in the image, nor the so-called screen tearing, which are cuts in the graphics that can happen during fast motion. Ok, some details that I have not mentioned yet, the sound is loud as hell, but only mono, not stereo. And the analog stick it doesn't have a click function to act as a button. This may limit some games, although nothing serious, just mentioning for the record. I also don't think the absence of a second analog stick is important. It's something present in the RG350, which I mention again because it's a great competitor, but when I tested that one, I didn't even use the second stick, can't remember of important games with support for it. Last but not least, battery delivers beautiful results. 
manufacturer says it lasts 4 hours, but actually with 70% brightness and 50% volume, I got more than 6 hours of autonomy, and I played lots of PlayStation while measuring, so yeah, better than expected. In addition, the battery module is easily reached and removed, and it can be easily found on the internet, so it's possible to have spare units. The new Pocket Go V2 is a good device, the screen is beautiful, it has a full set of buttons, performance is nice and the battery lasted well in my tests. You have heard me mentioning the RG350 a few times during the review, that's because these two are perhaps the best options with the same processor, a little better than average for classic games, so they are directly competing for user choice. In comparison to the RG350, I found that the Pocket Go loses in build quality and for the buttons being a little less accurate. But based on the experience I had, the small flaws of the Pocket Go are acceptable, especially considering that this guy often costs $20-$25 less than the mentioned RG350. It's a great saving for a handheld that will run the same games with an equivalent screen. So I think this one is a valid option for those who are in a budget. After all, this is a type of machine that many people take as a secondary device, so they don't want to spend that much. If you're aware of what you're getting, yes, this can be the one. Ok, so please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Once again, there is a link for the product in the description, and I see you in the next one. Bye!